As the name suggests, a vessel structured specifically to hold vast quantities of cargo compacted in different containers is called a container vessel, ship. The process of sending shipments in special containers is known as containerization. One of the most powerful methods of hauling goods is done by container ships. These ships have made it feasible to transfer high quantities of cargo at a time and have changed global trade efficaciously. Container ships are the cargo ships that carry most seagoing non-bulk cargoes. In today's world, container vessels have around 90% of the world's non-bulk cargo. One of the main ways of carrying ready goods worldwide is through container vessels. These containers are of a standardized size so that they can be easily transferred to various modes of transport. Anything can be carried on a container ship. Over the years, technological advancement has made it possible for comparatively far more feasible methodologies. However, crane systems still play a significant role in the loading and unloading operations of the containers to and from the vessel's holds. Specialized lashing and cargo handling systems are used to secure the containers in their places. Container vessels are typical in that they are constructed to accommodate immense possible cargo loads. The load holding capacitance of container vessels is measured in terms of 20-foot equivalent units or TEUs, with the giant container ships carrying as much as over 15,000-16,000 TEUs. Many shipping lines are opting for slow steaming to cope up with rising bunker fuel prices and overcapacity. There are many types of container ships which can be classified on the basis of generation, size of the container ship, handling modes of the ship, service range. Types of container ships in terms of size and generation. First generation. As mentioned earlier, the first generation of container ship came into existence in 1955 when the world's first purpose-built container ship was launched. The first generation of container ship traded between 1955 to 1970 and had a carrying capacity of 500 to 800 TEUs or 20-foot equivalent units. Mostly tanker ships and bulk cargo ships were modified to carry containers during that time. Second generation cellular ships. The second generation of the container ships came into picture during 1970 to 1980 when cellular container ships were made in shipyards to exclusively carry container cargo. The capacity of these ships was in between 1000 to 2500 TEU and the ship's length can go up to 215 meter. MV Koringa was the world's first fully cellular purpose-built container ship. Third generation or Panamax ships. These ships were introduced during the 1980s as the growing economies rapidly pushed need of larger container ship to lower the operating costs per TEU. The Panamax ships were made keeping in mind that they can cross the Panama Canal with a capacity of 4000 TEUs. This generation vessel dominated the container trade between 1980 to 1988. The length of these vessels was between 250 to 290 meters. Fourth generation or post Panamax ships. The new size and capacity of vessels which were introduced in 1988 known as post Panamax had 4500 TEU capacity and a width of 32.2 meters which was the width limit requirement of Panama Canal at that time. The length of these ships was between 275 to 305 meters APL C-10 container ship class ships were the first post-Panamax vessels. Fifth generation or post-Panamax Plus. In 1996, post-Panamax Plus vessel with a container capacity of 6,500 TEU was introduced, which were not long but wider to be more efficient. 
As time passed, container ships with 8,000 TEU mark started sailing at sea with deeper drafts and having a length of approximately 335 meters. Sixth generation Seuss Max ships or very large container ships. From the year 2006, a drastic change was witnessed in the container ship construction and very large container ships were introduced with a capacity of 11,000 to 14,000 TEUs and a length of approximately 400 meters which were able to pass the Suez Canal. Emma Maersk is one of the most famous VLCS which came into fame because of its length and TEU in 2006. New Panamax ships In 2016 as the new extended Panama Canal was inaugurated container ships with a carrying capacity of 12500 TEU were introduced to cross the new canal with a length of up to 366 meters post swiss max or ultra large container ships a further extension of the swiss max design led to the introduction of ultra large container ship class of 18000 to 21000 teus and above in 2013 these ships are 400 meter long and affected by the size restrictions of the swiss canal the triple e class ships by musk were the first to breach this mark malaka max These are ships designed which are not yet built but on paper. They can go up to the length of 500 meter which will become the longest ship in the world with a capacity of 25000 TEUs. Container ship types on the basis of cargo handling. Conro ships. Conro stands for container roll on roll off vessels. These ships can carry a combination of containers and vehicular cargo the containers are mostly stored on deck and the transport rolling cargo will be loaded in their ship's belly or hold their twin decks can be hoisted or lowered to adjust deck heights to suit the cargo whether cars or other heavy vehicles lolo ships Lolo stands for lift on lift off ships which are provided with cranes to lift the cargo for loading or unloading. Both 20 foot containers and 40 foot containers can be shipped on board these Lolo vessels. For the cargo which cannot be fitted inside the containers, it can be lifted, placed and secured directly on its deck or hold. Good amount of space are made available on the top deck so that it can be altered to fit the needs of the freight that is lifted on for transportation container ships on the basis of service range barges for inland waterways container carrying barges are used to transport the containers into inland waters where feeder vessels cannot transit in this type of intermodal transport the barge carries 100 to 300 containers depending upon the size of the barge the barge can be self propelled or can be pushed using tugs attached to it feeder vessels these are small capacity ships having a capacity of around 1000 teus as the name suggests these ships are suitable for feeder services It will feed cargo to mother vessels from smaller ports to larger ports or from larger ports to smaller ports where a bigger vessel cannot dock or sail. Mother vessel. The mother vessel is big in size as compared to feeder vessel and is usually bounded for international trades to serve between major big ports. Mother vessels have the capacity to carry thousands of containers and it can vary from 2000 to 21000 TEUs. Mother vessel calls only main ports and covers large distance compared to feeder vessel. Container ships in the range of 5000 to 8000 TEU are considered to be the most flexible in terms of the ports they can access and the market they can service. 
since using larger ships require fewer port calls. However, a ULCS will provide better provision to carry a huge amount of cargo for the same distance, providing larger savings in fuel and operating costs. Therefore, the limits of economies to scale in container shipping are much more limited by commercial attributes than by technical constraints. If you have of containers, dry container, reefer container, open top container, flat rack container, ISO tank container. Typically, there are 20 feet and 40 feet containers. This foot refers to length. So 20 feet is about 6 meters length and 40 feet is about 12 meters length. So let's take a look at them. The first is dry container. Dry container has the function as a box for transporting cargo. It is the most common container in the market and it's mainly used for general cargo. And it depends on the class, it is also used for dangerous cargo as well. From now, I will introduce various types of containers, but please understand this dry container is a standard container. Next, reefer container. Reefer container is temperature controlled container, like a moving refrigerator. Depends on the manufacturer, most containers can adjust temperature in the range of minus 30 degrees Celsius to plus 30 degrees Celsius. The temperature inside a container rises to 60 to 70 degrees Celsius just below the equator. However, with reefer containers, the inside temperature can be kept constant. Therefore, it is often used for food products and dangerous goods that require temperature control. Next is open top container. Open top container is like dry container without a ceiling. Since there is no ceiling, it is used for tall cargoes. Open tops are also sometimes used to put heavy cargo into a container from the top. It's not easy for loading heavy cargo that a normal 3 or 5 ton forklift can't lift. But it's not that difficult to use an overhead crane or a wrecker at a factory to load from the top of a container. The cargo won't get wet by rain because the ceiling is covered after the loading is done. Then flat rack container. The flat rack is dry container with no ceiling and no side walls. It is used for the cargo wider than the dry container. It is also used for not only oversized cargo, but also engage items that can fit inside a container. Even the engaged cargo but sometimes flat rack container will be used, when the factory loading facility is not enough. The ocean freight are generally higher for open top and flat rack containers. That's because there is limited space on a container vessel for those containers. For example, when carrying oversized cargo on flat rack, it uses extra container space on both sides as well as the top. Ocean freight is increased because it uses lots of places. However, even if it is a special container, the space on a vessel is not limited for an engaged container, so the sea freight can be kept down. Finally, ISO tank container. ISO tank is used for liquid materials. It may be cheaper to put wine, juice, chemicals and so on directly into an ISO tank container than into a container with the drums. Next, let's talk about the size of the container. First is a 20 feet container. The size required for actual operations is internal container size. 20 feet container is about 2.3 meters square and about 6 meters length. You do not need to memorize the exact size, it's okay to remember roughly. There are slightly differences in container sizes between shipping lines, so no need to memorize exactly. You won't be tested, so it's important to use it in the actual jobs and 40 feet container. 40 feet container has the same width and height as 20 feet container, which is 2.3 meters, and 40 feet container length is twice as long as a 20 feet. It is about 12 meters. It's easy, isn't it? Then, 40 feet high cube container. High cube means a taller container. It is mainly for a 40 feet container. 20 high cube container is not common. And in terms of size, 40 feet high cube is about 2.7 meters height. Let's summarize the size of containers. As mentioned earlier, please try to understand roughly. There are only four numbers that come up. The common size is the width of a containers. 
it is about 2.3 meters. Then, 6 meters for 20 feet length. 12 meters for 40 feet length. 2.7 meters for height cube. Open top has no ceiling. Flat rack has no ceiling nor side walls. This is the easy way to remember. And maximum loading weight is also important as well. When transporting not bulky but heavy cargo such as steel, machinery, liquid, water, rice, etc., in sea shipment, the weight of the cargo is very important for safety control. Therefore, the weight of the maximum cargo loading is about 25 tons for both 20 feet and 40 feet containers. Please keep this in mind. Just because it's 40 feet doesn't mean it can load twice as heavy as a 20 feet. Lastly, let's mention the grade of containers. The quality of containers will change depending on the type of the cargoes. Used containers are cleaned and repaired at Container Depot, and they are classified into grades A, B and C. For example, if it transports hygiene products such as food or medicine, the container grade must be A. Grade A container is in good condition with no major scratches, no peeling floors, and no smell. And Grade C container. If there is a hole in the ceiling of a container, it is not acceptable, but it is used on the assumption that it has damages to some extent. It is used for transporting the scrap material and steel. If you are involved in trade, you have to use different